Now, the uh, rush to judgment over Duma is looking daily less wise. Uh, the German state television reporter on the scene last evening said, and I quote, that the Duma incident was, quote, very likely staged. Now, all you were calling for, despite efforts on local radio stations and on the BBC to uh, portray it uh, otherwise, all you were looking for was a stay in judgment whilst that um, inconvenient thing called evidence was garnered. Are you feeling uh, vindicated already? Oh, no, no, it's far too soon for that. I think <clears throat> that people in my position have a very, very small piece of ground to defend. We can defend it absolutely, and it is this, that we don't know what's happening, and therefore it's, it would be very foolish of me uh, on the basis of that to start claiming that I did know what was happening when I hadn't got the firm evidence that I'm seeking. It, it is and remains the case that if uh, independent inspectors and proper independently gathered uh, evidence with the, with properly tight and regulated chains of custody uh, do conclude uh, that there was a chemical weapons attack and that there is then evidence which shows that it was conducted by the Assad state, then I will, I will immediately uh, concede that this is so. Uh, but that does no damage to my position, which was always that we should wait to find out uh, whether it was so before we acted. And once we do know that it's so, then we can discuss what action we could take. I found also that it was quite often the case with those who were urging immediate action. They said, well, would you agree with the, with the action that was taken? I said, well, not necessarily, because if, if you really are outraged against the killing of civilians in warfare, and quite a, as a matter of fact, I am, uh, then it seems to me that hurling high explosive into populated areas is not necessarily a good moral lesson uh, to correct this sort of behavior in future. So it's, it's neither necessary to accept that the thing happened without evidence, nor is it necessary to accept that the action taken by the, the Trump government was the right action, even if it had been so. I'll what stick to would, that. Yeah, if, not... I start, if I start saying on the basis of, of, of one German television report or whatever it might be that, oh, yes, I've been vindicated, then I, I, I think I'd show the same lack of, of, of patience for, for proper evidence that other people have been showing in the other direction. No, no, I meant vindication in the call no, think, to yeah, wait. No, I, I, I don't think this, the, the, only, the only vindication would come in, the, in, in some kind of absolute establishment that, that the event had not taken place or had been staged. And I think we're a very, very long way uh, from, from anything of that nature. Why do you think uh, there was this uh, rush? Because I'm a, a rougher fellow than you. Uh, I think the rush is itself evidence uh, that they did not want to wait for evidence because evidence there was none. I'm more sure about that than you are. So tell me why you think they, with, before the uh, experts from the OPCW even arrived on the scene, they had held a trial, found the accused guilty and carried out their sentence. Well, I think there is a, a general uh, a general desire for a new conflict among the uh, what you might call the military industrial political complex uh, in Western countries at the moment. Uh, it has to do with several things, but fundamentally it has to do with the great the close relationship which both the United States and Britain and indeed France have with Saudi Arabia, with Saudi Arabia's conflict with Iran, and with the quite likely forthcoming conflict between Saudi Arabia and Iran, which will drag a large part of the Middle East in behind it and quite possibly drag Europe in too. And I do feel rather strongly that there are people who desire this. Uh, there are a lot of other things going on apart from uh, the, the, the battle between the Assad state and the, uh, and the Islamist, Islamist rebels against it. Even in Syria, for instance, the recent attack by Israel uh, on a base in Syria, appears to have had a lot more to do with the Iranian Revolutionary Guard uh, trying to set up air defenses for its own units, which are now based in Syria, which Israel much dislikes, uh, understandably. And the, the widening of the conflict into, into a more general war seems to have quite a lot to do with this. And the, also the, the getting the public used to the possibility of war, of course, is always most easily done by engaging the public's best instincts and saying, well, of course, these people are committing atrocities. We must stop them, even if this isn't really the reason for the war at all. 
and then creates a war which creates still more, far more atrocities. Well, a good example being Iraq. Why, this is one of the reasons why atrocity propaganda is, 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 is so absurd in itself. If you don't like atrocities, don't start wars, because wars will, I'm afraid, inevitably produce atrocities on both sides. They just do. And it, it's, it's foolish to pretend or imagine that this will not be the case. You see, I think another, uh, if you like, uh, ancillary piece of evidence is the way that someone like you, uh, a, a paragon of English letters, a writer on a right-wing newspaper away, yeah. and uh, a right-wing journalist, uh, are assailed as if you were a, a Kremlin uh, stooge, an Assad asset, Uh and you're not the only one, of course, but in a way, you are you are the most absurd person to be so characterized. Well, I, no, a, a lie will be halfway around the world before the truth has got its boots on. If people call me those names, then quite a lot of people will believe that it's true. And this, this kind of thing works, as does guilt by association smearing and all kinds of other things. And people use these, these weapons because they work. One of the advantages uh, of the Internet and the social media is... The ability it gives people like me to rebut this stuff when it happens, uh, and quite quickly too, because I, I always had a very strong feeling that if someone tells lies about you on the internet, you should you should rebut them as quickly as possible, so that people don't come across them and imagine there's been no reply to them, and therefore think that they must be true. But no, it is it, it, it is what people whose own position is bad will always do to those people whose position is good. They won't address their arguments or the facts that they adduce. Uh, they will attack them personally. Well, some of them are dealing in alternative facts, aren't they? I mean, I saw your lips move. I heard with my acute sense of hearing what you said on the BBC late at night when not that many people were watching, though they have in great numbers watched it since. And I still see, even to this day, people claiming, people of repute, or at least in reputable positions, uh, who are uh, saying that you said that which you didn't. Yes, well, that, but the great thing is, that, again, another huge advantage of, of the Internet is people can check. And anybody who's really interested can go and check. And at, at the moment, those people who have made these allegations against me look very foolish if, if, if anybody checks what they say. And as long as, that's, as, long as people do check... That's fine. What I'm afraid of is that the atmosphere of tension and, and desired war will become so strong in the years to come, and I'm not sure how long this process is going to last, uh, that the vituperation against people such as me, who, who, who take stands against this and, and uh, urge caution and try and bring facts into the argument, uh, will become so strong that it's irresistible. And I do, I, I've said before, I've never felt this before in my entire life, living in what I believe to be a more or less free country. I do feel a genuine threat uh, to freedom of speech building up among us. Uh, I concur entirely. I've never felt uh, more of a dissident than I do now. Paradoxically, you're talking to me on a national radio station. Who knows for how long? Let's hope for a long time. Uh, you have your... Uh, place in the firmament. I have mine, but for how much longer? And are people being closed down uh, at the edges, I ask myself? I haven't... Well, of course, another reason for behaving like this towards people like me and, and, and making our lives less pleasant and less comfortable by, by telling untruths about us, in which some people will then believe, is that others who are thinking of perhaps joining in, in the, the, the rather small chorus of those who say, look, do you think we might have some facts? And do, do you not think the usual rule of a trial is evidence first, verdict second, and sentence third, rather than the other way around? Uh, that people will be inhibited from joining that because they will see what happens to those who do, and they'll think better of it. So it, it's, I suppose it's rather incumbent on, 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 on people like me to enjoy ourselves, rather obviously, with what we're doing, so that other people think that it might be fun to join in. Lastly, is another piece of uh, ancillary evidence the quickness with which uh, the uh, the response from Macron, May and Trump has been effectively forgotten? It is only 10 days ago that we were firing cruise missiles into heavily populated areas in an Arab capital city. 
and yet it might as well have been an age ago because no one talks about it anymore. Well, well the public memory is quite short, as we know, um, and, and politicians rely heavily upon this and what they do. Though, of course, it is also the case that the attack when it came was far smaller uh, than I think President Trump had wanted, um, quite possibly than, than, than President Macron had wanted. Uh, there wasn't much Britain could do because, on my judgment of Britain's performance in this, it was very, very limited by the, the, the very poor state, particularly of the Navy, which has ships which are equipped to carry cruise missiles, but which had never been fitted with them, for instance, and therefore couldn't couldn't join in with the gusto of the French had. But leaving that aside, I think most people thought it would be a much bigger attack, and it wasn't. And I think one of the most fascinating things about it, and one day we'll find out when the memoirs come out, is just exactly who in Washington, D.C., because I think that's where the decision was often taken, got it toned down. And the one slight, faint glimmer of hope in all this is that there were people in Washington, D.C. at this time under this ridiculous president who were able to to exert enough influence to, to to tone down the attack to a level where, in fact, it wasn't particularly memorable. And you could you could do a lot of nice graphics and show a few of those those videos of bombs going off and before and afters, but actually not much took place. And by the grace of God, it seems that nobody was killed either, which is a, a tremendously good outcome. I think that had a lot to do with the level of unpopularity in this country particularly uh, of the strikes. And I do wonder not whether it was, it was just General Mattis, uh, Mad Dog Mattis, so called in, in the Pentagon, but also quite possibly Mrs. Theresa May when she discovered just how unpopular this, this was and with, uh, with her members of parliament and indeed with her own electors, because I suspect they were writing to her, and thought better of, uh, of having a, a, a huge... and and devastating strike and, and cut it down to a very demonstrative firework display. Uh, so that could be the reason why it slipped out of the public mind. If it had been bigger, it might still be there. And also there might have been much more response. And we, we just, the problem was always going to be the danger of an accidental clash with the Russian, uh, with the Russian armed forces in the area. And that, uh, that could have led to completely unstoppable avalanches of reaction and counter-reaction. 